Hey there, everyone. I hope you are all doing good. Welcome to this new episode of Schleppy Patching. In this one, we are going to talk about Lopez Gate. Ask. It's a circuit designed by Don Buchler in the 200 series. Here is an example of a recent recreation of the classic 292 by Buchler. This is the 292T by Buchler and Tip Top Audio. It has four channels, but each channel does the same thing. The low pass gate behavior is that combo mode, which means that by turning one knob, we are at the same time affecting the volume and frequency content of our sound, which is kind of what happened with acoustic instruments. The harder you hit them, the more harmonics they have. Gate means VCA in the Buchla world. This is a low pass and a VCA at the same time. One of the other specific things about those classic low pass gate circuits are these big little black things that are called factorals. They have a very slow response to control voltage, which gives them an envelope of their own. Without the need of an envelope generator, you can get something that has a decay, even if you send just a little click into it. This is the one we are going to use in the Schlappy case, the MakeNoise LXD. It has that thing that MakeNoise created because they knew that everyone just liked to send very short percussive control voltage into low pass gates to make them ring. So they added that strike input. You just send a trigger or anything into it and it will just ping the circuit and will get you those nice organic decay sounds. Here I have a quick patch. So what I am sending to it right now is the center oscillator of the tree body. And I'm sending a very short trigger into the strike input. I'm sending the trigger, which is the blue one on the data. And let's change now and send an envelope to it, which is the green one. I'm going to send that to the CV input. You see that even though I'm sending super short envelopes, I still have that long ringing. This kind of sound is particularly appreciated with uh, FM sound. And often referred to as the Bukla Bongo. to show you how to do a low pass gate even though it's a bit of a weird one from a schlappy module the boundary any of those let's unplug the pitch and let's plug a square wave to the slew input of a boundary let's put everything at the minimum and let's look and listen to it at the same time. I'm going to take the output to one of the trace on the data. Okay, here we have that very low square wave. And 
what's going to happen when I start to reduce the amount of rise and fall on that boundary is that it's going to make it smoother. So in a way, it's going to low pass it because a slew limiter is a low pass filter. And we quickly get to a point where there's almost no sound left, which makes it behave a bit like a VCA, in a way. So if I were to send a snappy enough envelope to the rise and fall at the same time, I'm going to have a mix of low-pass filtering and amplitude modulation. can try to remove a bit of the click with the rise of the envelope one. The more exponential we make it, the more we can sort of recreate that ringing of the actual vectoral based low pass gates, as this is not vectoral based at all. send the pitch back to this. So you see, it is very much different, but it does work. the number of gates and stuff from the T1 sequencer that I'm using to sequence this. Okay, here is another way of looking at this Lopez gate thing. We could decide to go control free because we can. We could decide to have one filter module in this case, I'm going to use the angle grinder because it has a gentler slope than the 100 grit in low pass mode. And we're going to use a VCA after it, basically sending almost the same envelope to the filter and the VCA. Separating this will give us more control over the end result. That being said, having a proper low pass gate is just easier. Let's listen to the sound through the LXD just being striked. And now this is what I've managed to do. It's still, it's different. So what do we have here? I have a very sharp envelope, a blue one on the data controlling the frequency of my angle grinder. I decided to send it to FM2 without attenuator, which is sort of acting as a sort of strike input in that case, just like boom, here you go. We could use FM1, but as it's linear, it seems to not do the job as well. So from there we have access to the frequency, the initial frequency where it does start, so we have more control over the brightness, the overall brightness of the sound. And this envelope, the same one that I use to open the filter, I have sent it to the slew input of the boundary that is next to it. So we can basically just make it a bit longer and slew it down. It's the yellow one here. This one I'm using to open 
the boundary VCA here that receives the filter output as an input. So basically we have our sound going to the filter, getting filtered, then going to this VCA, this very short envelope opening the VCA, and this slowed down version of it opening the VCA. Oh, yeah, this one opening the filter, sorry. So it does make something quite organic because those two envelopes are related. The fact this one is longer will give us that low frequency ringing that we have on the Lopez gate signal. It's more bright here. Let's try to match the frequency. Yeah. That's pretty much it, right? We are very, very close here. So yeah, you can go like this. And then after that, as it's all break down into different modules, you can decide to modulate whatever you want. FM the filter. Could also make use of these to wave shape the signal. further of the classic Lopez gay thing right now, but this is why we have modular synth, I guess. Echoes and reverb. One other thing I wanted to show quickly, back on the boundary this time, is that it does also do some sort of wave shaping that reminds me anyway of people using test equipment. It makes things a bit uh, rough and weird. So let's just make a sequence, basically the same as before. I'm going to use a triangle wave to this one in slow mode. That's what I'm talking about, that view. It was a bit difficult to hear on the square earlier, but yeah, you hear that view sort of thing. Also gives a bit of weird attack to the sound. I find this to be quite enjoyable, especially on low sounds like this. It does give a bit of oomph. We can also sort of have it more by changing the slope.
we could mix in some other signals as well. If you engage the cycle, you will get some parasites, weirdness, and some... some additional weird pitched information. Lots of stuff to try with this. 